I'm Bo Lotto, I'm a professor of neuroscience. I study how the brain makes meaning, and I'm also founder and CEO of multiple startups. First, the audience has to deeply understand and feel the fundamental challenge that they're facing that's blocking them. And that's change, and the resulting unpredictability and uncertainty that comes from that. The second is to then offer the typical solution to that, which is ironically to stand still in the face of change, fear, the fear of not knowing, the fear of getting it wrong. The next is to give a solution to that, which is how you respond to change changes everything. Those who do well respond well. But then we have a conflict there, which is we have no agency and free will in that moment of the response. So then we actually have to now provide the audience, well, where can I have agency? And it's how you enter. We then want to offer them the principles and the skills, something they can actually tangibly take away and apply literally that day, which I call the 10 Cs, the innate skills that the brain already evolved to evolve itself. We then need to offer them, well, who needs to do this? Well, it's, it's you, it's everyone, because cultures emerge from the way people interact. If you interact in a competitive sort of uh, um, narcissistic environment, you're going to get a competitive narcissistic culture. If you actually interact with each other with the 10 C's, you're going to emerge a culture that's evolvable, a culture that can actually thrive because of change. Then we can need to say, well, where can you practice this every day? Where can I actually do this? And it's in conflict. It's in situations where you are not expecting this thing to happen. And this could be actually personally, at home, with your partners, with your children, but also at work. That's where you practice it, because ultimately this is an exercise. And why do people need to do this? Because every organization faces change right now. 45% of leaders think that their current business model is going to fail in the next 10 years. 95% of leaders think they need to transform the organization this year. How can you get transformation? It's by changing the way you enter uncertainty in the first place. That's literally where you get trans true transformation. And that's where you'll also get innovation, creativity, and adaptability in a world that doesn't yet exist. So how will our perception of reality and ourselves and our organizations change with advent of new technologies and including AI, but also the pace of change? that these new technologies are creating? And the answer is we have no idea, right? Which is why you need an organization and individuals that can adapt to that world that doesn't yet exist. Because whatever is happening now is going to be different in the future. And your success requires being able to respond with innovation and evolution in that future that doesn't exist. Hence why we need to have this conversation. So the power of AI, which my lab and myself have been working on for the last ooh, 20, 30 years, in fact, we have a new company coming out that is using AI tools to help people evolve. The powerful thing of AI is it can actually reveal the very thing that you don't even know exists. It can help you see the invisible. That's gonna offer tremendous opportunity but also fear because it means that people are going to have to move away from where they are right now but that has been true for any innovation that's been impactful the microscope the telescope it helped us to see the very things we couldn't see before and raises new questions and new possibility that is only powerful if you want to move if your organization wants to move for those who want to stand still it's going to be a threat So perception underpins everything it is to be human. So the colors we see, of course, the sounds we hear, but again, even the way we drive a car, even wound healing. Wounds heal faster if you perceive time to be moving faster, okay? Perception underpins everything it is to be you, which means that if you want to transform yourself, you need to transform your perception. So behavioral change begins with perceptual change. But you can't transform your perceptions if you don't first understand how and why you're seeing in the first place. What's more, if you're a leader, you can't transform the perceptions of those around you if you don't understand how and why they're seeing the world the way it is, or your clients, your customers. How and why are they seeing the world the way it is, right? 
How can you speak to them as individuals? Because to truly understand another person is not to understand what they did and where they did it, it's to understand why they did it. So the process of discovery and innovation is actually a stepwise process. It, and I call it the discovery spiral, okay? It's not just going from here to there, it's actually going out and coming back on itself, okay? The first step is you have to doubt, and then you deviate, hence the title of my book. You then diversify your experience. You then distill a principle, not a rule, but a principle that transcends context. You then decide what you're going to do based on that principle, and then you dare to do it, because only when you dare to do it do you actually become embodied. And that takes you from knowing something to understanding something. And true adaptability and resilience lives not in knowing, but in understanding. Okay? Now, a lot of people talk to you about how do I diversify my experience, or how do I diversify my team, or how do I distill an idea? But almost everyone misses out on the key, most essential step, that if you don't do this step, you're not going to do anything else, which is doubt. It all begins with doubt. If you're not willing to doubt what you think to be true already, you're never going to diversify. You're never going to actually discover anything. Because your first step from A to B is not B. Your first step is from A to not A, to let go of what you thought to be true before. Which means that change and uncertainty is not the barrier to innovation. It's the actual engine of evolution, engine of discovery. And it's changing your perception about this that changes everything. It's how you enter it in the first place, which is why we talk about the power of not knowing, right? And how we can enter change in a way that facilitates our ability to innovate and evolve. So I am both someone who does research in neuroscience uh, on perception and almost everything I talk about in my talks are things that we actually discovered. It's not something that we are parroting or uh, quoting from a book 10 years ago. We're actually discovering these things today. So you're getting the most recent insights. But I also apply this in the real world because I'm also founder and CEO of multiple companies. One of which is an augmented reality company, which now is a patent holding company where Pokemon Go is actually reading on our patents. We have the patent for leaving digital content tied to GPS coordinates. I also have a company called The Lab of Misfits which works with brands to help them take ownership of their values and mission. We've worked with Cirque du Soleil, we've worked with Whirlpool, Hotpoint, any number of different companies to help them, again, take agency over what they truly are in business of. So for instance, Cirque, though they do circus, they're in the business of awe and wonder. And then we help them take ownership of that. Another company that we're actually bringing into the world is a new co that's grounded in artificial intelligence that helps people through AI support their own evolution, which sits alongside a training program which we can actually cascade across a whole organization. And finally, we have another company called Beautiful Mind, Beautiful Mind Learning Labs, which is an education company which focuses on young people. So we actually do personal and professional development of teachers to create an environment that prepare young people for a world that doesn't yet exist, using the same principles that we actually talk about to leaders. And we're actually building a school in the southwest of England, which will then become multiple schools we call the Hummingbird. And these young people are learning how to ask questions, embrace uncertainty, they're learning how to be entrepreneurs by becoming the entrepreneur. They're learning how to be scientists by becoming the scientists. Okay. So there, these kids will actually finish with the possibility of ha having a master's degree at 18 to 19 years old. So people walk away with the principles and understanding of how to evolve. They also walk away with the desire to evolve because they feel evolvable. They also walk away entertained. It increases the sense of closeness to the other people in the audience. We've quantified this, it increases closeness by 100%. People walk away more creative. We've quantified this. People increase their sense of creativity by 30%, which is exactly what you need, both connection and creativity in a conference setting where you're bringing people together from all over the world, meeting maybe for the first time, because success 
requires collaboration, working together, okay? not by any individual. So this is what people walk away with, a sense of how to evolve, a sense of being evolvable, and the desire to evolve, feeling that sense of excitement, enthusiasm through entertainment, and wanting to collaborate and be creative in creative conflict with those around them.